Hey, what's up? <clears throat> Loyal viewers and first timers as well. Welcome. So today I'm going to be talking about training priorities. And I haven't seen this sort of breakdown the way at least that I'm going to break it down anywhere else. So hopefully you, you get something out of this. Now this is, uh, you know, most of this, this channel is devoted to a sort of high intensity style of training simply because I think it's, <laughs> I think it's the safest. I think it produces results. I think it saves so much time that I think if you are, um, older, like I'm 40 now, if you're older, you have a family, have a job, you got a lot of stuff going on in your life. Uh, and unless you are trying to train for some sort of athletic event, like a powerlifting meet or something like that, I think you'd be a little bit crazy not to try out hit, not to give it a try and see what it has to offer. So with that said, let's take a look at the training priorities that I have come up with here. I'm not much of an artist, but it'll get the point across. Okay. So here we have a pyramid in the center. And the stuff in the pyramid are the essentials, the absolute essentials that you must have. And the base of the pyramid is safety. Okay, you absolutely need to have safety because without safety, safety is the foundation of everything else. If you don't have safety, all of the other stuff falls apart because what happens? You end up getting injured. And when you're injured, you can't do the other stuff. Okay, so second, as soon as I say this, you're gonna understand why safety is so important. Okay, the second foundational thing that needs to be a priority is consistency. So you can see the arrow going up here from safety to consistency. Why? Because if you're not safe when you're, when you're training and exercising, you're going to mess yourself up and you're not going to be able to train consistently. You're going to have to take time off uh, dealing with your injuries. And it has happened to me so many times. And it happens to just about everybody who falls into the trap of thinking that more is better when it comes to exercise, okay? If you don't have consistency, you're not gonna make any changes. This is just, it's just true about everything in life. You need to keep showing up, you need to keep coming back. Now, consistency doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be in the gym all the time. It just means you need to find a schedule that works for you and stick to it for a long time, okay? Exercise and training, these are lifestyle changes that are meant to stay with you forever, okay? They're not just you know, I'm gonna do this to get in shape for the for the beach or whatever it is this summer. Okay, this is something you do forever. Do you stop brushing your teeth when you're not gonna be meeting someone? You're not gonna be, you know, kissing someone? You just stop brushing your teeth? Don't stop working out. Okay, so after that, after consistency, we have progressive overload. Okay, so progressive overload is gonna keep pushing you to be better, to work harder. Sorry, that might be a little bit hard to see. Also, my handwriting is super messy, but that's progressive overload. Now, if you don't have consistency, you won't be able to progressively overload because you're not going to the gym, you're not working out, you don't need to go to the gym. You're not working out or exercising regularly enough that your body is going to adapt to the stimulus that you're giving it and able to produce, you know, do more reps or more time under tension or whatever, to lift something heavier, whatever it is. So you need to have the consistency in order to be able to progressively overload. And you need to be able to progressively overload so that you keep pushing your body to get better. Because if you just keep doing the same extra, same routine every time you go to the gym, you will have adapted to it and you're not gonna be pushing yourself anymore, okay? And the final piece of the puzzle, I'm gonna have to write this one a little bit. Why don't I do it like this? I'll erase these so that it doesn't get messy. In 10, sit, T. Okay, this should be no surprise coming from somebody who is championing high intensity exercise. Intensity is the other crucial piece of the puzzle. Now, don't let this fool you just because it's at the top of the pyramid. It doesn't mean it's like necessarily less important. They're all necessary. And when something is essential or necessary, I mean, yes, it's perhaps less necessary than safety, right? If you're, if you're injured, you're going to be making even less gains than if you are, you know, not training with a sufficient intensity. But if you really, if you actually want to make progress, you need all of these. Okay. So what does it really matter which one is more or less essential if they're all essential? Okay, and in intensity is absolutely an, in 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 an essential piece of this puzzle. Okay, it comes after progressive overload and progressive overload contributes to it because if you're not progressively overloading, you won't be training with intensity because as I just talked about, your body's gonna adapt to whatever the routine is that you're doing and before long, you're not gonna get the same level of an, of an intense workout from doing the same thing that you've been doing 
for however long you've been doing it, okay? So by progressively overloading, by pushing yourself to do more or do heavier or whatever it is, you're going to be pushing the intensity, okay? Now, you can also progressively overload by, you know, just improving your form, just adding in a little bit of a hold, these sorts of things, right? And so really focusing on getting this intensity is, you know, it's going to help drive everything else. So basically I could put, well, it's not going to drive progressive overload. Or con Sorry, I misspoke. Intensity is not driving the others. They are driving from the bottom up towards intensity, but intensity is kind of the goal here, right? So what does it matter? So if you do like, let's say you do one more rep than you did last time with, that means progressively overloading, but you're still not pushing it to a, a level of high level of intensity. You're not really going to be driving that much, much adaptation. You might be driving neurological adaptation because you're getting more practice, but you're not driving, um, you know, muscular gains, strength gains, that sort of, that sort of stuff necessarily. Okay. Physiological adaptations. So, this is the crown jewel that all of the others lead into. That's what, that's a better way to say it. Okay. Now what you'll notice is not in the essential pyramid of training priorities are volume and frequency. Okay. And there's a very clear reason for that. They do go on this chart. They just go outside the pyramid of essentials. Okay. So volume and frequency is like the ocean or the water that the essentials swim in. Okay, they're swimming in that ocean because you need to have some volume and intensity, but here's the difference. You can't really have too much safety. You can't really have too much consistency. You can't really have too much progressive overload as long as, you know, again, you have safety, right? Uh, and you can't really have too much intensity, right? Because here's what'll happen. Once you push your mu muscles to, you know, failure, you just won't be able to do more you won't be able to do more. So you just can't go really beyond that level of intensity. So you can't really have too much intensity. What you can have too much of is both volume and frequency. So these are variables that you need to find a way to adjust so that they fit your individual, you know, physiological needs, your ability to adapt to them, right? And for a lot of people, that may be a lot less than you're used to, especially if you're getting older, right? If your intensity is super high, it may be less than most other people on the internet, most other internet experts, or the uh, the guy at the gym, uh, or, or the you know the the local um, trend head or whatever it is, is telling you that you need to do in terms of volume and frequency. It might be a lot less than that, but it might also be more than you know the once a week or once every ten days or something that some some hit um, you know people some people who are devotees. Devotee is a bad word. I'm not a devotee of anything. I'm just using critical thinking to suss out what, what works and what doesn't and, and testing and, and exploring for myself. So I'm not, not a devotee, but somebody who um, has found success and is now trying to spread the message that high intensity training can work for people. Okay. So a lot of those people maybe say once a week, once every 10 days, something like that. You're going to have to figure this out for yourself. This requires trial and error because everyone is freaking different, man. You know, some people are born, some people are born with the genes that make them seven feet tall. And some people are born with genes that make them five feet tall, right? Same thing, there's the same amount of variability in your ability to recover and adapt from uh, intense, intense training stimulus. So you need to find out what works for you in terms of volume and frequency. And that's done through trial and error, testing, recording, okay? Making sure that you're, making sure that your numbers are, are slowly creeping up, these sorts of things. Right? Making sure that your intensity is there, that you're recovered enough. Okay, making sure that your body's not breaking down and making sure that you're not getting burnt out and, and your consistency isn't dropping or something like that, right? Okay, so there you have it. The absolute essentials of training, you can't do without any of the pyramid of essentials of training priorities here. Volume and frequency, uh, you're gonna have to figure it out. They exist a bit in the background, but they are elements in there. Hope that's helpful. Get after it.